The brand new second trailer for Ahsoka is finally here, and we here at the Archives are eager to break it all down. Discuss brand new characters such as Shin and Balin, and analyze some of the evolving relationships with characters from Star Wars Rebels. The first thing that really struck me about this is this definitely feels like a sequel series to Star Wars Rebels as Dave Filoni originally pitched. For those of you that don't know, originally Rebels was going to get another season, or a sequel series in lieu of the Clone Wars, but Dave Filoni eventually took a lot of those ideas and made it work with Ahsoka, and this trailer certainly goes a long way to illustrate that this is a story not just about Ahsoka Tano, but about the wider galaxy at large. The trailer opens up with our two villainous dark Jedi, Shin and Balin. Balin the master, and Shin the extremely ferocious apprentice. The two of them raid a New Republic ship, with many of them stating that in the background there appears to be a modified X-Wing as well as various A-Wings. The characters of Balin and Shin are very mysterious. However, thanks to a character profile a few months ago, we learned that Balin was an Order 66 survivor and has been working as a mercenary in the time periods between the end of the Clone Wars and the fall of the Empire. Towards the end of the trailer, he even mentions to Ahsoka Tano that Anakin always spoke very highly of her. This line to me is especially intriguing, and may indicate that Anakin and Balin became friends after Ahsoka Tano departed the Jedi Order, in those few months that were left of the Clone Wars. Many of the writers behind the Ahsoka series made the clear distinction that Balin and Shin are not entirely dark side in nature. They do of course wield the dark side and are dark Jedi, but their goals are not entirely nefarious. And Balin and seeks out a power that Thrawn possesses to reshape the galaxy in his own peaceful image. Speaking now about the dark side apprentice Shin, her origins are completely unknown. However, I speculate that she was a young Force sensitive that Balin likely rescued during the era of the Empire. Whether she was a youngling that was rescued by Balin at the Jedi Temple, or a Force sensitive that he discovered after the fact is unknown. But she's been described as very ferocious and extremely powerful, and Balin is promising her new power that Thrawn possesses in the unknown. Later in the trailer, we see Ahsoka venturing to some sort of Jedi or ancient ruins. Many people on Twitter have indicated that this could be a nod to the Mortis arc, and the more mystical side of Star Wars lore. Ahsoka and Obi-Wan were with Anakin on Mortis, and the daughter of the three Mortis gods formed a strong connection with Ahsoka, and has even been following her around as a convoy throughout all of Rebels, and is likely to appear in the Ahsoka series. Later in the trailer, we see Balin and Shin approach what appears to be some sort of map, a map operated mystically by Magistrate Elsbeth. This is especially compelling because Magistrate Elspeth put up a pretty good fight against Ahsoka in The Mandalorian's second season, with many fans not liking that Ahsoka Tano had such a difficult time with a seemingly non-Force sensitive. However, it appears here that the Magistrate may actually hold some Force sensitivity, and there are even theories going around that she is one of the survivors of the Night Sister Coven, which would give her a similar story to that of Balin, and a Force sensitive group that the Empire, Insidious, attempted to eliminate. After this is a crucial moment not only for Ahsoka, but the entirety of the Star Wars galaxy, and is a meeting between Hera, Mon Mothma, and a group of New Republic officials, as Hera is begging for the fighting to stop, but urging the New Republic that a war is coming, and that they need to not demilitarize as quickly as Mon Mothma and the New Republic want to. This was actually a major flaw that Thrawn and later Darth Sidious would exploit in Legends continuity. The fact that the galaxy at large was so sick and tired of fighting that they lowered their defenses extremely, to a point that made them very vulnerable. This is in fact the same argument that Leia would have with the New Republic several years after Ahsoka. The fact that they are so exhausted from the war that they are willing to not look for darker forces at play. The same thing that allowed the Sith to hide under the Jedi's noses in the galaxy for centuries. Following this moment is a major reveal, that being that Ahsoka Tano took upon herself an apprentice in the form of Sabine Wren. This is unique and a popular fan theory for some time that many believe that Sabine had some sensitivity with the Force. Sabine is of course directly from Mandalorian heritage, and wielded the Darksaber for some time during the Clone Wars, even trained directly by Kanan Jarrus. Sabine has had experience with the Darksaber and lightsabers before, and later on we even know that Sabine and Shin will duel. So what does this mean for the character of Sabine, and is she actually Force sensitive? By what the trailer suggests, it is a possibility that she does hold some semblance of Force sensitivity. 
It's extremely rare for Force sensitives to train those that do not have the ability to touch the Force to some degree on their own, but this would also mean something else entirely for the Jedi future as well as how it's intertwined with Mandalorian culture, making Grogu and Sabine some of the same from different paths. Sabine, being born a Mandalorian and trained a Mandalorian who eventually embraced the Jedi path in some respects, and Grogu, born as a Jedi who embraces Mandalorian culture, a plot thread that will certainly be tied up at some some point as the two of them intersect. Something else here that I believe will be heavily involved in Ahsoka Tano's arc is her fear of taking on an apprentice. She was the apprentice of Anakin Skywalker, and her turn to the dark side devastated her to a degree that is unfounded. We know thanks to the Mandalorian that she walked away from Luke Skywalker's New Jedi Order, and didn't directly want to be involved with the training of a new generation of Jedi, and I believe that that plot thread and story arc will be carried over to Ahsoka. Ahsoka has had major issues with the Jedi following her departure from them all the way back in the Clone Wars. She saw many of the flaws that the Jedi Order were undertaking, and in many respects, saw how they were headed down a dark path while impressively not going down a dark path of her own. Ahsoka refuses to call herself a Jedi, and there's actually been a massive debate in the fandom recently if Ahsoka even is a Jedi at all. This harkens back to the words spoke by Balin in the very beginning of the trailer, that they are no Jedi, and creates an interesting dichotomy between the villain and the hero of our story. Two individuals that have walked away from the Jedi path, but have taken very different paths of their own. And many are speculating that another one of Ahsoka's major arcs over this series would be to embrace the Jedi way once more. And by by the end, coming full circle, coming to terms with Anakin Skywalker's turn to the dark side, culminating in Ahsoka proclaiming that she is indeed a Jedi. We then get another glimpse at Ezra, a previously recorded goodbye message to Sabine that we got a glimpse of in Star Wars Rebels. And again, more parallels, just as a hologram of Anakin Skywalker training inspired Ahsoka Tano in the Rebel series, Ezra here is inspiring Sabine, with the full story and plot of Ahsoka being the master and apprentice relationship. Sabine also cutting her hair in this moment is reflective of the same change when Kanan cuts his hair off in Star Wars Rebels. A new chapter is beginning and they are willing to accept it and begin the journey. In Sabine's case, the hunt for Ezra and Thrawn, and perhaps starting up her training yet again. We then get various action shots of Ahsoka fighting a hunter-killer droid as well as a new Inquisitor, or what many are speculating to be a brand new Inquisitor. There are tons of theories about this character, from some suggesting that this could be an adaptation of Starkiller into Star Wars canon, and a secret apprentice trained under Darth Vader before the arrival of Luke, which explains how the Inquisitor was able to last so long, presumably being the very last of his kind. Others have suggested that this is the eighth brother from Star Wars Rebels, who presumably died from a very long fall on the world of Malachor. The designs of the Eighth Brother and this Inquisitor are certainly similar, however if you look closely, the Eighth Brother has less fingers than this Inquisitor and Ahsoka. And to put things very lightly, this Inquisitor seems far more skilled than the Eighth Brother was, who was defeated extremely easily by Maul. We then see Ahsoka and Sabine in the Jedi shuttle attempting to evade a Purgle, where they appear to be being pursued by Shin. This would be the first place that they would likely look for Ezra, as in the finale of Rebels, Ezra manipulated the Purgles into jumping into hyperspace, viewing it as the only way to protect his family from Grand Admiral Thrawn, and this logically would be the first place that anyone would search for Ezra or Thrawn. Speaking of Thrawn, we get our very first shot of him. Unfortunately, he does not speak, but this is Mads Mikkelsen, the same individual that portrayed Thrawn in Star Wars Rebels, and Dave Filoni described Mads Mikkelsen's performance in Ahsoka as a terrifying and a very deep one. The heir to the Empire has officially begun. We then see the duel between Shin and Sabine. Again, one of the major questions here is, is Sabine actually force sensitive? If she's not, then this will be a very difficult battle for her to overcome. Shin even has the comment to her that she has no power, hinting that her abilities in the Force may not have emerged fully, or even if she's Force-sensitive at all. If she is not, this is going to be an extremely difficult duel to win. We then get a better shot at the map that Balin is obsessed with, a map that presumably leads to Grand Admiral Thrawn, with the imagery being very shockingly similar to that of Tython as we saw in The Mandalorian, and a lot of the same energy that exudes from the world between worlds, with this map taking a lot of time to 
to develop and a lot of separate keys in order to activate it. But in the end, it could actually be the answer to the location of Grand Admiral Thrawn and this ultimate power that Balin seeks. We then get a few more action shots of the Inquisitor, in a location that appears to be the exact same one where the map is located, and is showing us that this Inquisitor appears to be actively hunting Ahsoka, but is also heavily involved with Shin and Balin. It's clear though that this Inquisitor's goals do not align with the Dark Jedi, and that the three separate factions are very much enemies and different views on the Force. What's unique about all of them though is that they all have echoes and pasts as Jedi, but that they have all gone separate ways to varying degrees. Ahsoka being a wayward warrior, a warrior reminiscent of the old Jedi path that they represented during the Old Republic era when they were not subservient to political rule. You have the Inquisitors, who ultimately bowed their heads to the Empire and the Sith going down one of the darkest paths imaginable. And then you have the Dark Jedi in Balin and Shin, who are not entirely dark side in origin, or even affiliation, and believe in a brighter future, but one that must be paved with a road of blood. But there you have it my friends. This Ahsoka trailer was not very long at around 2 minutes, but there was absolutely tons to unpack here. From the relationships that are forming between Ahsoka, Sabine, and others, as well as the echoes of what remains of the Jedi Order. It's all entirely entirely fascinating and looks absolutely brilliant, and I cannot wait till the end of August to finally get to see the first episode of Ahsoka. Get to see where one of my favorite Star Wars characters has been in the time since we last saw her in Rebels, and to get to see the remnants of what remained of the once powerful and mighty Jedi Order and how these Force Sensitives are attempting to rebuild the galaxy in their own image. Not to mention the return of Grand Admiral Thrawn. As always, my friends and acolytes of the Force, thank you so much for visiting our archives. What are your thoughts on the brand new Ahsoka trailer? And what do you hope to see when the series ultimately premieres? As always, my friends, may the Force be with you and have a great day.